Hello, everyone. It is so great to see all of you joining in from across Europe. Amazing, the number keeps climbing. All right, we're going to get started here. Hello, everyone. My name is Haley. Um, I am a part of the business development team and a trainer for Remax Europe. And I have the honor of hosting Spotlight for you. Um, let's go to the chat really quickly. Let's see who we have here joining us today. You can go ahead and write in the chat where you're from. And let me know if it's the first time if you are joining us in Spotlight or if you are new or if you've joined us before. Let's see who we have in the group. <laughs> no one? <laughs> Come on, guys. Hi, I'm Haley. <laughs> there I am. Awesome. Well, once you guys get the chat feature sorted out, give us a give us a wave, say hello, say your name, where you're from. Um, because I think probably some of you guys have um yeah, perfect. Awesome. Some of you guys, oh you right, awesome. Aziz from Istanbul. Um, you actually use the Q&A feature. If you guys want, that's actually a very good point. We are translating, ah, <laughs> we are translating this se um, session into several languages. Um, I'm just, I'm enabling the chat feature because someone, okay, now let's see if the chat feature works. Thank you to that person who helped me out <laughs> and told me that the chat was enabled. Perfect, now it's working. That's very important that we have the chat feature working because um, I have a suspicion that you guys are going to be asking our speakers a lot of questions. So if you guys have questions, you can go ahead and write them in the chat. I am going to be monitoring the chat um, and I will find a very nice moment to interrupt our lovely guests when they're, when they're doing their presentations to make sure that you guys get your questions answered. We do have a short amount of time so we might not be able to answer all of them, but I promise to do my best in making sure that you guys can communicate with each other and communicate with our lovely speakers that we have here today. We are translating this session um, into uh, several languages today. We have Spanish, Polish, and Turkish. So if you are looking for those languages, you can navigate to the bottom of your device and you should be able to, um, to listen in those languages. And if anything happens with the translation, please write it in the chat. It does happen from time to time and we will get on it right away to make sure that the connection is restored. So now we can get into uh, get into it. In these sessions, um, if you've joined in before, um, you know that we like to talk to top performers from across Europe um, and learn their techniques that they're using to help them grow their businesses. And when I was thinking about the focus topic that I wanted to have for this session, I went to the regions. I went to you guys to ask, what are your challenges? What are you struggling with the most in this moment in your business? And the two topics that I kept hearing were that we're struggling with low inventory or getting listings and we're concerned about the market at this moment. There are some market shifts and maybe we're going from a seller's market to a more of a buyer's market, or maybe the market's becoming a little bit more balanced. How do we navigate these changes? And this was the, these two topics were the challenges that I kept hearing again and again. And so I thought, well, we should focus our session today on those two topics. So actually I'm curious um, to hear from you guys. How is your local market at the moment where you are right now in the world? Is it a buyer's market, seller's market, balanced, or is it like in the process of shifting? This is a very interesting question, like for me, but probably for all of you guys as well, at least I hope. Um, mixed, buyers, still sellers. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm curious, keep writing it in the chat. So you guys can all see what's going on in the markets in your local areas. You know, we are very fortunate that we have such a large network that we can learn from each other and, and grow. And that's the whole purpose of this session, right? Um, in At least from what we've been seeing on a Remax Europe level, there are a lot of um, 
changes taking place uh, in the market. And we want to be there to make sure that we can help you navigate those changes. So with that in mind, um, I'm going to, uh, I'm very excited to introduce our first guest from Remax Netherlands. Um, he, <laughs> he is from Remax Netherlands and he actually only started with Remax around two and a half years ago. So quite a challenging time to start <laughs> as an agent in a new career. Um, and he actually managed to close almost 40 transactions in his first full year as an agent, which is pretty incredible. Um, he was a new agent and new to town, which for those of you guys, as you know, if you are in a new area, it's hard in the beginning to build up your, your network and your database, but still he managed to, uh, close almost 40, 40 transactions in his first full year in an incredibly competitive market. So if you would all welcome Keys <laughs> from Remax Netherlands. Hi, hi Keys. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me, and hi everybody in, uh, in Europe. Good afternoon. At least I think it's afternoon everywhere in Europe, right? Yes, yes, yes. No, no, man, it's yeah, it yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much for for joining us. Um, so I was just hoping you could tell us all a little bit about you, um, your journey with Remax, what your strategy was in the beginning, and how it has evolved as you have gotten more experience as an agent. Yes, yes, I will. Um, as you already uh, told a little bit, is that I'm new. I moved uh, two and a half years to a new city. Um, I had uh, a few connections over here, but not that big. I even have to learn all the street names around here in my first week that everybody comes in. Uh, do you know the house over there, over there, where it is? There's all, I yeah, have to learn to know the city myself. Um, but in my first half year, uh, I really wanted to learn about uh, the market itself. I had uh, a mentor on the office who comes with me. Uh, with Remax Netherlands, we got during the, the country some training. So, uh, so you can learn to start. Uh, and within a half a year, I knew a lot about the business, uh, but I really needed to yeah, um, gain connections and uh, getting leads and some, something to start, somewhere to start. Um, as you said about the buying market and the selling market, at that moment it was more of a selling market. Uh, and the buying market was, like for us two and a half years ago, pretty new. Um, but our um, uh, manager from the Remax Netherlands, he was really focused and he saw a new market as a buying market. So what we did as uh, uh, my mentor, I went with him with the viewings. And uh, at that time we had like, I think maybe 60 people. One time we got like 90 people that respond to one viewing for one house. Um, so it means, uh, as we always say, you can only sell it to one person. It means like 89 other persons didn't get the house, but we're still looking for a house. Yeah. Um, we didn't call them all, but we called most of them uh, afterwards. Uh, yeah, you were looking for a house. We ask them always, are you looking for a long time? Uh, some of them are looking for over a year, some of them a few months. Uh, and we ask them, maybe do you need help? And that's, uh, that's how it started. So you started building connections with, with buyers who it sounds like they were struggling a lot. Yeah, especially with buyers. Um, what we did is that we noticed that we got a lot of people looking for houses and for the viewings, uh, as I said, we got like over 30 to 60 people looking for houses. Uh, we started to gaining them, uh, what we call uh, at our offices, a WhatsApp alert. So we put them all in like an, um, um, a database and then every new house that comes to the market, we show first to everybody that is like a Remax uh, relative. Rather, a Remax fan is what I call it on my Instagram. <laughs> we got like uh, um, that I have viewed a house before at Remax, and we ask them, "Do you want to want to be the first one that knows about every house that comes on the market within Remax?" Um, for us, it was a database. For them, it's like have like an extra surface to be the first, uh, because even then, yeah, you can notice if you get like 90 people that want to view the house, we're not going to show them all 90. Uh, we're going to show a lot, but we want to do, um, it was like a trend to put them like on a, a res uh, reserve list. So if you can't view the house, you can on a list, but nobody did something uh, with the list. And we thought maybe, yeah, it all potential customers. So we call them and we say, do you need help? 
so you you won't be on the list next time but especially the help um yeah it's not not to view the house because everybody can see all the houses that come online um they know exactly what they want um but we can assist them as a buying agent to um to tell them how uh, how you started I always say you don't place like the highest offer. You have to place the best offer. And the best offer is not always the highest one, but your conditions has to be really good as well. Um, and you also can convince as a buying agent, that the seller, uh, the selling agent, that your client uh, is already checked. He did all the checks for the mortgage. You know which amount he can borrow, can, can borrow uh, to put into the house. And you have security if you as a selling agent choose for me with my buying agent. So um, and in the meantime, in between, you're going to look uh, like the history of the house. You go with them to all the viewings. Uh, and we always say like the selling agent is on the side of the seller. Um, but I'm going to help you as a uh, yeah, party of the, the buying process. Amazing. So it sounds like you were kind of taking advantage of this gap, like, I don't know, these this, this hidden, all these hidden leads that no one was really looking at. They were kind of like passing them by all of these other like 10 or 90. You said 90? Is that true? Like you would get 90 buyers calling? Yeah. That's that's yeah, like an amazing house. resource, actually. <laughs> and most people were just like not really following up with those 90 leads, but you decided to focus on them. How you said you would call them and ask them how long they've been looking for. Were they yeah. how did they respond when you told them about the concept of a buyer agent? Were they surprised? Were they uh happy yeah, well, or how did that conversation go? In the beginning, we uh, we call people and ask um, if they uh, wanted uh, a buying agent. But in a in a time, we just say when you have your own viewing and people come uh, when you're selling a house and people come by for a viewing, you ask them, uh, "Is your buying agent coming?" Um, and people responded to that, "A buying agent? What's that?" Like in 2020, it was, wow, I haven't heard of it." Uh, then you give your business card and say, uh, come next week or next day to my office. I will explain to you what it is. And maybe I of my, uh, of me and my colleague can help you uh, with that. Uh, and in like uh, 2021, I think everybody that came by uh, knew already what the buying agent was. Um, but yeah, we're calling them up, uh, calling them and just say, um, do you have a buying agent? Do we know what it means? Because everybody says, uh, we don't know what it is or how it works. And we explain what we can do. So we say, yeah, you can uh, search for the house, but we can um, yeah, take all the steps with you. Uh, and the problem in the beginning was that everybody said, yeah, if I take a buying agent, it costs a lot of money. Um, I always say it can save you a lot of money because also when we sell a house, yeah, and it is true. It sounds like a, a talk that you need for, for selling a house, but um, it's really true because when we got, we're selling a house and we get some offers on the house, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the gap between the, the highest and the, uh, one, the, the second highest bid sometimes was like 30, 40,000 euros. And if you knew, knew more information about the house, you know more about the area, um, you could have known that you didn't have to pay that much or right. uh, save people to, they wanted to bid like 80,000 over. We can advise them, don't do it. There are other possibilities to, um, right. yeah. But I mean, it's, it's a strategy. In this market. I think that's, that's right. What we're, you were kind of hinting at it, regardless of whether you're working with a seller or a buyer, having a professional by your side is not only going to save you money in, in most cases, it's going to make the process a lot easier, a lot, you know, more efficient for you as well. So that's, I think, mainly pointing to your services. Can you tell um, the the guests, because we were talking about it a little bit uh, when we were having our chat a few weeks ago, but can you tell them how you explained how you were compensated and a little bit about the commission? Because everyone, you know, all yeah. of the markets are different, who pays for what, and how you guys managed to solve this whole like compensation question. How do you guys do it? Yeah. As you told, uh, I did like uh, uh, 40 transactions last year. 
uh, but the commission in the Netherlands is um, compared to other countries uh, yeah, lower. Uh, it's between the one and the two percent normally. We try to get the two, but it it really depends. Mm -hmm. um, but for a buying agent, we decided to not put like a percentage on it, uh, but like a, a commission. So if you put a percentage on it when you're going to buy something, it's not in the advantage of your client because you yeah if you buy more expensive houses and uh, you want to increase the price and that, that's not yeah. where you're for, uh, uh, hired at. So um, we said we do a, like a startup fee just to mm -hmm. start because you're going to go with them with viewings and um, yeah, just a small amount to just get started. Um, and the rest is no cure, no pay. So only when you get your house, when you're uh, signing a contract, uh, what also is a really important thing because the contract uh, in the Netherlands is made by the selling agent. I think in more countries, maybe like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you want some, somebody to check that and also the buying agent uh, is going to check if everything is all right and to protect you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they got the key of the house, then they uh, pay the commission to the, to the buying agent. Um, but I've heard that in some countries you have to share a uh, commission fee. We don't have to share anything. So yeah. if your client is hiring you as a buying agent, um, yeah. You don't have to share it. Yes, I think it would be very hard to share uh, one percent <laughs> in a lot of the other yeah. regions. The percentage is higher, then there's something more to share. Um, but yeah, yeah, the point is, I think you know, even in a market, you know, like we're going to have some other guests uh, from Portugal, and the percentage is usually around five, sometimes six. And uh, you guys have a very low uh, commission compared to what they are having, but you guys still manage to do it. You know, you're managing to take advantage of this gap in the market that everyone was kind of like looking beyond it. And you are providing excellent customer experience to these buyers and you are being compensated. Um, and can you, so we have to wrap it up because we need to go on to our next guest. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, what happened, like what impact did this have on the competitors? Because I think you were mentioning that now the competitors started watching what you guys are doing or maybe even copying it yeah. a little bit. <laughs> they fall out re really quick, um, but yeah, we try to stay ahead of them. Um, so when something new happens, um, yeah, we, we do it for a longer time so we can move on to the next one even with the viewings and we did like online viewings and we try to, uh, yeah, when there's some, something to try new, we want to do it in the market. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's our strength in the Netherlands, but also, yeah, doing to our manager who really pushes us to come with new ideas and to try things. And sometimes we try things that, that don't work, but at least we tried it. And uh, yeah, things that work, we're going to build on. And the only thing I wanted to say was, I was a little bit surprised how uh, in Cannes, which the last uh, last month, uh, how less uh, countries work with buying agents. Because for us, it's yeah, within two years it went went so big. It's like for me, it's half of my business. And if you buy a house for somebody and they live there and they're gonna move in like three year or four year, I even had some uh, some people that already wanted to move. Yeah, the first uh, one they're gonna call is uh, is is me. Absolutely. You, yeah, you buyers help become anymore. homeowners. I think that's something that we tend to forget. But um, yeah. every person who you successfully help buy a property is now a potential seller. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. So you increase your market double. So uh, yeah, I should advise to do it everywhere. And I think it, I think it can work maybe in a different way, but I think it will work and can work in every uh, every country. Amazing. So well, thank start you. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so sure. much for, for sharing your insight and your experience with us. Um, you heard it first from Keys. Um, you know, you have the potential to completely double and expand your market if you pay attention to working with buyers, which leads me to our second special guest um, from Remax in Portugal, um, a former Unilever manager. Margarita only joined Remax around one year ago. And after her first six months, she was like, maybe I have to change my strategy a little bit. Margarita. Rita, welcome to Spotlight. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, you are having as much sun as we have in Portugal. Uh, so I'm speaking from sunny Portugal. Uh, quite. A, we don't. We don't have. I don't think we'll ever have winter again. In this <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, we You're gonna make the northerners jealous. 
<laughs> I, I want everyone to come so then I can sell them a house. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Margarita, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, I know that after you made this adjustment in your strategy, um, you ended up completing 16 times more transactions. So I'm very excited to learn a little bit more about how you managed to do that. So I'll let you just take it away. I see you have your presentation up. Um, yeah. I'll let you have the stage. Okay, so yeah, let's, uh, I'm really happy and I'd like to say thank you to have this opportunity to talk to so many of colleagues in uh, in, uh, in Europe. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Haley has already said who I am. I'm just going to go through it very, very, very quickly. So I was a former Unilever manager um, and uh, it was for 20 years. I was in the marketing, I was in sales. Uh, but then I was uh, pretty fed up uh, with uh, with it because you know when you do the same thing for 20 years, you you want to do something different. Uh, so I decided to to start in real estate. And uh, you would ask uh, what a what a new Unilever manager would would want to come to real estate. Uh, but it was quite easy for me to decide because you know it's a people's business, and I am a people's per person. Uh, I like communicating. Uh, I love, in fact, to speak to 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 everyone. One, even the people that are sitting next to me in the in the bus, they normally become my best friends. Also, at least for that time, um, I I do have a passion for real estate because I have lived abroad for a lot of years, uh, either as a teenager and as an adult. So I have had to have a lot of houses and a lot of homes, and I understand what it is to change countries. And I have this passion for helping others. So this together uh, has only one answer, which is real estate. So. Uh, come, going to my results, which is, I think, the reason why Haley uh, asked me to be here. So in June, uh, when I started last year, I had this two-week real estate course, which we have here in Portugal. And the only words I heard was listings, 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 and to go door to door and to try to get listings. Well, the result was uh, 10,000 euros in seven months. I was the 4,684th in Remax, Portugal, which okay, it's more than the than it's it's more than the, the middle, you know. Uh, we are 10,000, <laughs> but uh, this was not enough for me. Uh, I am very competitive, and I decided to rethink all the set strategy. And you know, the first thing to do is to understand what is your way, because I am talking, Keys is talking, Viviana is going to talk, but we are all Viviana, Margarida and Keys, and all of us, we can all reach a good result, but we need to find our way. Where, where are we the best? Is it in buyers or in sellers? But we need to understand where. So I did that as a, as a manager, of course. So I re rethought my strategy and I thought to do a buyer's one month course with Viviana, in fact, uh, she's going to speak soon. And there I heard two words then, it was not only listings, it was listings and buyers. And here is a very important thing. Uh, I don't like to do door to door. It's something that, uh, you know, everybody uh, wants us to do, but uh, I don't really like to do it. So, uh, because I don't like people knocking at my door. So I don't do what you don't like people to do to you. So I just, I couldn't do it. So for me, um, working buyers and listings, but in another way, was amazing. So the result was uh, 160,000 euros in six months. Uh, so from January 2022 to, to June 2022, I became the first Remax Portugal agent uh, in B level. And I was the 60th in Remax Portugal. And I cried. When I saw that, because that's it amazing. Was... Congratulations! <laughs> I was so it's like clapping, but I don't know if you saw it, so I just had to say. No, I can, I can really see. I can't see anything. You know, because yeah. just, <laughs> outstanding yeah. achievement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and I, I cried, and I cried because you know, yeah, I wanted to do better, but I, I, I never thought I would do this this well. And now it's like a, it's like a drug because I want to do more and more. So I, I've already gone to the gold award, and I'm on my way to get the platinum, and it doesn't. Stop Stop. It's like a wheel that doesn't stop. Um, but this just happened because, again, I changed my strategy and uh, I explored both sources of revenue. So I am not that person that says you, you only need to do buyers. Uh, no, you need to do buyers in listings. 63% of my uh, uh, my commission comes from buyers, yes, so much more than normal, but I do also have listings because listings also brings us buyers. 
uh, through the leads um, and uh, also again because if you are buying another house you are probably living somewhere so you need me to sell your your house so it becomes listing and that's what i'm going to try to explain it's the way the way i did it so and this is what I call the buyer's power. And it's a, a power uh, that it's not, it's like a hidden potential that nobody works because they think, oh, it's too, it's too hard. Buyers are, uh, they, they, they are not loyal and all that. It's not true. Uh, the truth is if you work them well, they will be very loyal to you, maybe more than listings. So there are four, four um, very important parts in this buyer power. Uh, which is the first, of course, is the sales, what we all do. And that would give us maybe 10%. And then we have the buyer's contract that I don't know if you have heard. And then listings and word of mouth. So let me just start by the first one. And this one is what we were trained to do. So we listen to the buyer's needs, be it a lead or somebody that, uh, that, we, that you know that wants to buy something. And we normally send them three options. We don't meet with them, we don't know them, we don't know what are their needs. We just send them the options because they say they want a three bedroom with a garden or whatever. And then they give us the feedback. And most of the times when we hear the feedback, it's negative, we don't even send them more options, but we should. So we send more options. Eventually we do be viewings and then proposals and sales. With this, you have like, a chance of making 10% in sales. This is the, like, for me, uh, the most important thing, this and the last one, which is the bias contract. It's something that was inventive and it was a really good invention and it was brought to me by Viviana, which is um, the bias contract. So we listen to the buyer's need and we always start by that, but instead of showing them the options by WhatsApp or by email, we just present them the three options in-person meeting. And this is so important. This is really so important. And why? Because, you know, in, a, in an hour, I will become their best friends. I know how many kids they have, if they have a dog, if they have a mother-in-law that they want to put in the basement or no, it's a rather very nice mother-in-law that they want to have in an ensuite or whatever, or uh, they have a kid that loves to swim. So they do need a pool, something like that. You get to know them much more than if you just send them, you know, like the options and because they would only give you like three characteristics that that can be like a thousand, a thousand houses. So you would make a much better work and much more important than that is the bonding that you get with those people. And then you get the feedback, but you get the feedback in person and they probably will say, yeah, but it's not quite what I want. And it's that time where you put the net and you give them the buyer's representation contract, which is something for free that you don't pay anything. So then you say, okay, so you like this specific house in this specific neighborhood. Uh, well, I can go to that door. I can knock on the door and ask if they want to sell, but I will need something that says that I, I, am, your uh, I am your representative. And this is the buyer's representation contract. And everyone says yes, because why would they say no? You are not asking them to pay. They are not marrying you. And even if they were, you know, even marriage is end, unfortunately. So, you know, it's not something forever. So there is no reason why they won't sign it. They can sign it with you and with somebody else. So with that, this is gold for us. This is like a diamond in our hands because with that, we can go door to door and ask if somebody wants to sell their house. And with that, I got uh, four, four listings in like a month. Uh, so that's where the part of the listings come, you know, with the buyer's representation contract, you are not only, uh, creating the bond and the loyalty with that uh, buyer that most of the times, and I would say like 80% will become your buyer forever. You will also be able to get new listings and sales. And only through this, you are already you can imagine increasing your sales so much. In my case, it was 16 times more. I think it was good. <laughs> Um, so the last one is the word of mouth. You are building a relationship. And if, if, you are a buy, if you are an agent that still didn't understand that the most important thing in real estate is a loyalty, trust, and a relationship. And if you are not creating that relationship with your client, you are not doing a right, a good job. 
because this is all about people. This is all about caring. And they don't care what you are doing. They don't care what problems you have. They want you to solve their problems. And you need to make them think, even though you are not always only thinking about their problems that you are. And with that, you create this uh, trust, loyalty relationship, and you make them think and believe. I think the word is believe that the, you will find them the right home. And most of the times they are desperate because they can't find them. And that's why they come to you. They always start alone. So there is a reason why they come to you. They want to believe in you and we have to make them believe that. And with that, they will tell their friends. And in this picture, for example, you see a boy that is telling two girls. But most of the, the time, our, our client will say to three or four people. So imagine that. One client will give you probably four or five clients. So you can multiply that. And for example, Keys had 90, maybe. He can have a lot, like almost six, uh, 600. Uh, so... This move, of course, will give you new listings and new buyers. I think for all of us, it's, it's, it's very uh, straightforward. But of course, and this is what we call the buyer's power. And this will, I'm sure, increase your sales if you do it uh, this way. Because of course, it's, this is very easy to say like, yeah, well, uh, you can increase your sales by being and having the bonding with the, the client. But it only starts on that meeting, but it's, it will come for, for months. So you have to be resilient. You have to create that empathy. You have, have to have so much patience. I am not a very patient person, but with my clients, I am so patient uh, because you need to. They are in, they are in pain, you know, they, they are either buying a house, so they are using all their savings to buy a house, or either they are selling something that they used to like. So it's not an easy thing to do. So you need to be empathetic and patient. And lastly, you need to have passion. And this for me is uh, what makes my business different, is that I can only work with passion. Uh, I, I, I speak with passion, I work with passion, I, li I live with passion. I live every day with as much passion as I, 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 li I can. And people understand that. So I work with my heart. Uh, I was in Unilever in ice cream. You probably know the logo. It's, an, it's a heart. So I just, uh, I just know how to work with the heart. So that's my main uh, advice for you is work with your heart, create the bonding and the buyer will be yours. And for sure, the business will be yours. So thank you so much and good buyers. Uh, this is... Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> good buyers. <laughs> yeah, I truly hope that uh, that I could help and that I could give some good hints for you to because we can all reach what I reached. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, there was actually one question that I wanted to um, pull out um, for you before we hop over into our, our final speaker. Um, how do you make sure this was from Alexandra from Romania? How do you make sure that the buyers don't go directly to the seller and buy without you? Uh, well, again, it's a relationship, okay? So there is uh, there is this way because the relationship is not only with the buyer, it also then becomes with the seller. So I'm the one who went to his door and uh, and of course, I will create this relationship before I talk to the buyer. I will only sell that property uh, or I will only show that property to my buyer when I'm sure that there won't be this. But there's always, of course, that, that possibility it never happened to me because I do create a very, a very important relationship, a very strong one. This yeah. is the base of everything is the relationship. Real estate is a relationship based uh, business. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Aziz. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you uh, so much again, Margarita, for uh, an amazing presentation. Um, I'm sure that uh, you are going to have a lot of people talking. Uh, you've made me think about things in a different way. And um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to continue to talk about some of the ideas that you shared with them. Um, and for our last speaker of the day, you actually, Margarita, already um, hinted at who we are going to be having for our final speaker of the day, also from uh, Remax Portugal. And you might have seen her at the Remax uh, European Convention in Cannes, where she did um, a presentation for us there. Viviana is going to be sharing her secret formula to uncover hidden listings in a competitive market. Viviana! <laughs> 
Hello. Oh, you're muted. I just want to ask you to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hello. Hi. So Hello. good to have Hello. you. So um, regarding the last question, just let me um, tell you that we only do exclusive listings. So the the reason uh, why the buyers won't get to the sellers is that they can't. Okay. Because we do exclusive listings. Okay. Yeah. Just, to help to people, are, like there's no option for them to do that because that uh, seller is already like has an exclusive contract either with you yeah. or with another agent. Um, so, and also then again, I, I suppose on the other hand, you have maybe an exclusive uh, buyer's Listen, agreement yeah. or at least some sort of contract uh, with the buyer as well. But I think it, still people, people break contracts, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, every time. Yeah, and there, yeah. therefore it comes back to the relationship, which is, yeah. uh, I think what Margarita, was Margarita is absolutely right. I think, yeah, most of the time, or all the time, the trust, the relationship that we built with the, with our clients, even sellers or, or buyers is the same. Um, you know, it's the most important thing of the process. Absolutely. So Haley, Perfect. I'm so sorry. Just, just a note because I know that people they don't know our legal framework so sometimes they're a little bit confused how does this work if they are if this is free of charge for the buyer okay and you know it, it, people don't understand that yeah thank you so much for for elaborating on that point so Viviana um you are here with us today and um I know there, you told me you got like, I don't know, over 200 messages, like questions and people like asking yeah. you after the presentation. And God. So if you get another 200 questions or I, I, I apologize, that, but <laughs> everybody wants to know how you are working with buyers um, and how you are turning buyers into listings. So I'll let you go ahead and take it away. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. So it was really was 247 messages that I got. Um, and so I know this, this is like a huge uh, subject now because most of the people, they are very curious how to get more listings or how can we do it in a low inventory market? It depends because, you know, the market is changing now. So um, the truth is that I don't have like a magical word that I can say to you, no, like focus, focus, and there's a lots of, of listings, no. But just to, to let you know, when I first started in Remax in 2016, uh, we just uh, heard, I only heard, just like Margarita, uh, I only heard at the training academy the word uh, sellers, Fisbos, sellers, and Fisbos. So in the beginning, I was totally focused on that. And for you to have like a quick note, in the end of six months, I had 40 um, listings, but no money at all, no transactions. And I was always farming, always calling Fizbos and everything, but it wasn't happening for me. So my first transaction happened uh, with a buyer, you know? Like I was, I was always ignoring buyers because I thought that my business should be uh, sellers and I should get listings and more listings. So when I had like a contact, when someone was telling me, oh, my niece wants to buy an apartment, I was like ignoring that and always trying to make tasks that were, you know, like giving me more and more listings. So. One day after a terrible, terrible door knocking afternoon, I was sitting outside my building thinking that anytime my mother was about to call me as she used to asking me, did you sell a house today? You know, <laughs> and uh, in my head, it was playing like creep from Radiohead. I was thinking, uh, I, don't, I don't belong here, you know, very sad. And suddenly I saw this guy with a man, they were looking to the windows of the buildings and I suddenly felt that I should talk with him. So this guy was Marcio. Marcio was my first client, the first client that I, that was not a seller. Uh, so it took me three weeks to close this deal. And it was like just my green flag for buyers, okay? But even um, before, even after that, I was, you know, I thought that 
he was lucky. So in the year after that, um, I was looking at my business plan and the numbers showed me that perhaps if I could sell a house to every lead that I had, um, that was contacting me for my listings, I could be more and more productive because I work in a small town villa uh, outside Lisbon. We only have like 80,000 uh, people living here. So it's so small, you know, everyone knows each other. So it was very difficult for me to reach my goal that was 250,000 K. So for me, um, I, I started to realize that while I was working like 12 hours a day and I should be more and more um, effective and efficient with my buyers or with my showing so that I could, you know, reach my goal. So first of all, I thought that perhaps if I could like build a stronger relationship with them, probably if I just could met him like face to face in person, I could build that kind of relationship that they will trust me and they will give me their life details. And so I could, you know, be like searching for a house, like uh, representing them. Uh, at that time, Remax Portugal was launching this mandate, this buyer's agreement that we work with. So that basically is a contract free of charge. And the thing that we say to our buyers is that we will represent them uh, in the market. We will look for their house, their dream house, and we will do lots uh, of tasks uh, prospecting the house um, in, the, in the place that they want to buy. So um, I think in the beginning, um, for me, it was like a very organized and a, a form of, of working uh, with buyers because they will sign a paper with me. So, you know, when you sign something, it, you have like a bigger connection because if you don't, or if you want to quit, you need to call the, the agent or you need to cancel it. So um, it was, for me, it was a, a very, strong way to connect and to link with a with a buyer so it was working for me at the beginning and i saw that the the problem with the buyer it was only the following them up because the buyer has a different timing from the seller and all the buyers they want information all the time they are always asking things and sending links and you know <laughs> they are just like overwhelming us um, so I was investing a lot. I was farming a lot. I was farming all the time. I was trying to, you know, reach everyone. And there, that time I thought, because I was sending, sometimes I was, uh, referring, um, other people sending referrals to other agents because I, I couldn't have enough time, uh, to, uh, follow all the buyers, all the, the leads that I was getting. And so at that time I was looking to my business and I thought that probably it would be better for me if I could build a team and build uh, like agents that were to totally focused uh, on buyers and other agents that were only doing tasks and focusing on sellers. So this was my first step um, to, you know, like to grow in this uh, market. So I don't know if you have any questions, Aileen. Yeah, actually, thank you so much. <laughs> I was looking for the right moment and you gave it to me, which was perfect. <laughs> thank you. Um, we already do have quite a few questions. I've been answering the ones that I that I know, um, okay. but there was one a question that I think is a, a, a quite a common one. And I think really shows the kind of service that you can provide as a buyer agent, because I know, um, a lot of us uh, over the past two years, three years have had a, a problem with inventory. So there have not been enough properties that are available on the market. And what do you do if you have a buyer who wants this property and they have this criteria and the property doesn't exist? I mean, it exists, but it's not on the market. Um, so yeah. Mehmet was asking, how do you find these houses for the buyers? Uh, are you visiting them or how do you do it? Okay, so 
really, if you look at the market, you will have your answer. In Portugal, uh, more than 50% of the house per sale are for these books, okay? So mm -hmm. the thing is, when you get like you're fully com a compromise with your buyer, you, you need to take the step two, okay? So the step two is to work and it's to go for FISBOs and open listings. And, you know, at that time, at step two, we need to be like knocking doors, okay? This, this is not an easy task to do because um, signing this contract with a buyer is the easiest part of, of all the process, okay? And it, it's difficult the second part because mm -hmm. sometimes we're not willing to do what it takes to call FISBOs and to knock on doors and to talk with open listings and get them exclusive. And this is our process. So first of all, when I have this contract signed with my buyer, you know, it's much more easier for us to call a FISBO and tell me, hey, Mr. FISBO, I have your buyer. Uh, and, you know, it, I have a contract, I'm hired from my buyer, and now I have a contract with them. So do you want to sell your house? I have a perfect buyer. So, and then what do they say? They, do they say, well, perfect, then just send them to me. What do you yeah, do? Sometimes, sometimes, most mm -hmm. of the times they, they say that, they say, okay, so if you have a buyer, you can bring it to me or something that, like that. And I say, yeah, that would be great, you know, but my buyer is, is a very busy person. That's the reason that he hired a professional. So uh, first of all, I need to look at your house and see all the things of your house to see if it is a match. Can you, uh, can I get you, you know, your house tomorrow at 6, 6? 30 please is that okay for you and then what do so, they say usually they say okay but are you bringing the uh, them or you know they they just don't know the process okay yeah. so when we tell them that we are representing a buyer they you know they get a little bit suspicious but mm. they don't want to miss because if they are really really a seller they won't miss this opportunity. So usually they say, okay, you can come, but I won't give you any exclusive contracts. Okay, you can come. And I will say, okay, thank you so much. See you tomorrow. And that's it. Like yeah. the autistic way. Amazing. And how does it then, how do you start the conversation with the buyer? Because I know we're talking about how we're using buyers to like leveraging buyers and working with buyers to win listings. What is this like? this little secret where you like transform a buyer or a buyer contract into a listing. How does this happen? <laughs> a buyer contract into a listing. It's very easy because if you, you have like the buyer and you are representing the buyer, uh, it's very easy because if you need to sell, okay, the seller, because he trusts you, sometimes even the seller becomes your new buyer's contract, okay? Because they like it so much and they think, oh, this is so organized. This is so good. I want to, I want to work like this. Oh, you can go to the place that I want to buy and you can search for a house for me uh, with all the, future, the features that I'm asking you. So this is great. This is amazing. So usually what we do is that we try to do like the perfect match you have a buyer and this buyer wants a three bedroom apartment in that particular location so you go there you go knocking doors and you get like a fit okay so for you to get the showing with your buyer you need to get the exclusive listing there is the key because someone else okay. was asking that question how do how does it work with the payment? Because if you're approaching a FISBO, they don't have a like who is paying for you? Because you said that well, the buyer doesn't pay. So you are then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who pays, okay? The money is not important here. Most of the people, most of our transactions are made with, you know, like emotional, they are emotional decisions, okay? So people, they they 
they just, you know, they just trust you and they see that you work like in a different way. Mm-hmm. And so that the, the money is not important because you need to like have one number and the number that you have is uh, the maximum value that the, the buyer is investing and the minimum value that the seller is going to accept, okay? Yeah. So if you had all the information, all the qualification done, you know how to negotiate it, okay? Because you have all these informations and you need to buy these things, the pain, the anxiety, the fear. Yeah. So if you know that, you know, you have like, you have the full power to, to negotiate with them. Amazing. And then you were saying, because now we're getting some questions about getting the FISVO to sign the exclusive contract. How do you um, uh, talk to the FISVO to get them to sign an exclusive contract with you in order to complete the deal? Yeah, it's very easy. First of all, I, I knock on the FISVO's doors when, when I have an appointment with them. I get my contract with me. So first of all, I say, okay, so Mr. FISVO, this is the contract that I have sign with my buyer so can you please present me your home can you please show me your house and you know i'm always asking open questions for Mm -hmm. them uh, to talk a lot Uh, the most uh, the most information or the most important part is that you gather all the information and be always asking open questions so you know lots of things just like What made your heart beat when you chose this house? What made you uh, buy this one? Um, What would you change in your house? Why are you moving? Uh, What happened if you uh, can't sell your house like in a three month uh, period? So, you know, we do uh, lots of open questions because in the end we'll we'll use it, you know, because Mm -hmm. if you know, the anxiety of this family, of this seller, of this FISBO, if you know his pain, you in, in the end, you can tell him, okay, so Mr. Seller, this buyer has 30 days to buy. And for all the things that I saw, I think that your house is the perfect house uh, to my buyer. And at this point, he will say something like, okay, so you can bring him, him when, when will Let's you like deal. to visit? Yeah. Bring him. And, and I say, okay, but I can't do that because um, if to show your house, I need to have an agreement with you. Mm-hmm. And this is the part and we'll say, okay, I won't sign anything. And we will say again, okay, Mr. Seller, are you willing to sell? And he will say, say, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't like to sign things. Okay, so my buyer has 30 days to buy your house. Okay, so I think this is the perfect match for you. And, you know, sometimes they don't sign immediately. Okay, mm-hmm. I have some cases that people, and I do have a real uh, story uh, from a person that now it's my personal friend and I met her when she was a FISBO. Can you imagine like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's like, can you be a friend of a FISBO? No way. (laughs) Yeah, but you can. And so this is a real story. And my friend Paula, she was a FISBO back in 2000, in the beginning of the pandemics. I called her because I had this, um, this buyer that he wanted to buy a house in a place that it was, it, it's very far from my area. So it, it is a place uh, small in the North Lisbon. And so I had this buyer and I didn't knew anything about the market. So I found Paula in a, a, like Idealista, it's like a portal. Mm-hmm. And I called her and she was very mean and very, you know, like, no, I don't care. I can sell by myself and something like that. And so I was always calling her and I called her for like three weeks 
And so she told me, okay, I've spoke with my husband, so you can, okay, uh, we will um, be with you next Sunday. Is that okay for you? Do you work on Sundays? And I said, no, that's fine for me. So I went there, I saw the house, and I was with my uh, buyer's contract agreement, and I showed her, and she was like, um, okay, because you have this client, because it's different. Okay, she signed uh, the, the exclusive listing with me. So, but it wasn't so happy at all because my buyer went for the visit and in the end, he said something like, I don't know. I don't like this energy. No. <laughs> the energy, okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, Paula is going to kill me, okay? So when this happened, I called her and I said, look, my client didn't like any, uh, something in the house, but... You know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I will have another buyer uh, next, very soon. And so she said, okay, but she was like suspicious. And, and the thing was that this was in the end of um, February and 20, uh, 12 of March was our first lockdown. Okay. And I was like thinking, how can I kill myself? Because I have this house to sell. And, you know, the, 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 um, the sellers will be very mad. And so I was always putting ads everywhere. And one month later, at the pandemic, I, I sold their house. And so it was like a miracle, okay? But they were so, so glad and they were so happy that after that, I sold um, an apartment from Paula in uh, Lisbon and she bought me like a huge house too. So, you know, it was like, she gave me two, four, five transactions, no, six transaction total. Okay. Wow. From one Frisbo. <laughs> from one because Frisbo. You, but I think the main difference that um, a lot of other agents miss out on was your persistence. Um, and I guess that's kind of like what Margarita was saying earlier, like having this resilience um, to keep following up, even when she's saying no, 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 and being kind of mean. And like, you still were like, no, 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 I really, I'm gonna help yeah, you, I, I promise. Think, you know, my tip is just, you know, I, I think that I'm a natural um, problem solver, you know? And, you know, I don't get defensive when Fizzbos, they when they treat me bad. You know, I don't get defensive. They are doing their jobs. They are fizzbos. If, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if they weren't difficult, everyone were selling houses everywhere, you know, and our commission paycheck will be just a small commission because it was so easy. So I think that we we don't need to get defensive with the fizzbos. Don't, you know, like it's your job. So yeah. that's it. Yeah, we have only like one minute left. If there was one piece of advice um, that you have for, for agents in, in today's market, you know, things are maybe changing, maybe there's some level of uncertainty. Do you think that they should still work with buyers? Is it still a good time to uh, get out there and try to, you know, work with buyers? Yeah, Would you agree? Absolutely. In 2021, 67% of my buyers were sellers too. So they were contacting me in this form of buyers, uh, like a regular lead. And in the qualification process, I knew that they need to sell too. So sometimes mm -hmm. you're wasting buyers and you're also wasting sellers. So if you don't get their trust and you don't get the chance to qualify them, you never know. Yeah. That's right. I mean, we were talking about how to, um, you know, convert FISBOs using a buyer's contract, but also so many buyers have something to sell. And if you are, you know, disregarding all of those buyer leads, you won't find the hidden listings <laughs> that absolutely, way either. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's right. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Viviana, for sharing your insight. And I hear you're going to Turkey soon. Yeah, yeah, I am, I am. Yeah. So keep keep spreading the, the word about all of the hidden listings you can get working with buyers. Thank you so much uh, for well, your time thank today you and for, for sharing it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and yeah. there you have it, everyone. Um, three different agents from different levels of experience, uh, ways that they were getting creative 
in a very competitive, challenging market. I was monitoring the chat and, you know, there's a lot of questions about, well, in our market, it works like this. It wouldn't work like that in ours and da, da, da. The point is there is opportunity out there and you need to get creative. As Keys was saying in the beginning, they are trying new things and they're adapting. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. But in you know today's world, <laughs> you need adaptation and the ability to change are going to make a huge difference in your business. So I would encourage you to see how you can take things that you've learned today, different techniques and um, different approaches and see how it can apply to your market. Um, I hope that it was inspiring uh, for all of you out there. And um, I look very much forward to seeing you in our next spotlight session. All right, bye everybody. <laughs>